So in our previous uh, video, we tested the launcher and we noticed that several times the launcher uh, threw the ball towards the left and we wanted to see if we could straighten that out. So we took a look at uh, some different key components. You can see those in red. We have our 5 16th stop pin or bolt and our PVC cradle that holds the ball. Now currently what happens is you pull the bar back and then the ball goes back with the bar and, and you release the bar and the ball travels forward with the bar and then hit the bar hits the stop but the ball continues on. So what we wanted to see if we could do is is remove the pin and and the cradle and uh, one of the reasons is that the, the pin can potentially be a pinch point and it also has uh, the effect of, of building up stress in a very specific point on the aluminum bar there and uh, that stress can work hard in the aluminum. It uh, actually changes the crystalline structure of the metal over time and causes it to be more brittle and can eventually cause it to crack. And uh, so we were going to see if we could launch the ball using the same kind of technique that a uh, football kicker would use. So the kicker would, uh, there would be a guy holding the, the tip of the ball in place and the kicker would, would wind up and, and then kick the ball. Um, and instead of the ball traveling with his foot, he would instantaneously contact the ball that's being held in a certain point and then the ball would release. So we thought it might be interesting to design uh, a device that could hold the ball in place like our uh, kicker, like the guy that holds the ball in place for a kicker. So we thought maybe we could take a paper clip and uh, bend it to create a device shown in purple here to hold the ball in place. And then we could remove the cradle and the stop pin and maybe improve the accuracy and, and uh, longevity, wear, and maybe even the uh, safety of the device. So uh, we started with a uh, the ball, we put it in its, its location, then we took a needle nose pliers and a paper clip and started bending the paper clip to create a larger loop at the top and a smaller loop at the bottom. The, the overall uh, paper clip shape is a, is a C shape when you look at it from the front of the device. And uh, so it took a little while to figure out exactly where to position it. And so we drilled a uh, hole in the side of the wood and put a panhead wood screw in there to hold the uh, paper clip in place. And then we put a little loop at the bottom and put another screw there to uh, just ensure that the paper clip would be uh, nice and uh, secure. And so once we had the, the paper clip in place and uh, it was connected, we, uh, we put the ball in and tried to make sure it was lined up correctly so that the, uh, the launcher would hit it. And at this point in time, we still have the PVC on there. Uh, we're still looking at experimenting with the PVC. We will eventually remove that because it actually ended up causing, with the, with the paper clip, ended up causing the ball to sort of launch to the side. Um, so we'll do a quick launch here and uh, just, just check it out. So we decided to do some field tests and uh, we uh, recorded the distances and the height and uh, the different angles and positions that we launched the ball at. And we did this a number of times. We had a little sand trap set up so we could see exactly where the ball had landed and then we recorded that. And uh, tried to figure out if we could uh, improve the launcher in any other ways. And we noticed that there were a couple of opportunities for improvement so we went back to our uh, drawing and made some ad adaptations. Finally we were uh, looking at our design and we discovered that the uh, as we launched at steeper and steeper angles, like right here, when we're setting the uh, the device at at steeper angles at like 50 and 60 and 70 and 80 degrees, the uh, top section of the device tended to fall backwards or lean backwards. Uh, and so when we were launching the ping pong ball, it became uh, it was hard to reliably launch it without the, that top part moving. The other thing we noticed is that we tended, we, we, we wanted to grab the, the launcher to stabilize it. We tended to want to grab it right here, which is, which is great, except for the fact that when the aluminum bar swings back, um, it, can, uh, it can smack your hand on, on this part right here. So we wanted to make sure that that wasn't going to be a possibility. And we wanted to find a way to keep this top piece down. So what we decided to do was to incorporate these features or create these features. So we uh, have a, a, a bolt that we've cut a little bit short, goes right here, it's a 5 16 bolt. And we have a nylon sleeve that goes around it and that keeps the, uh, the launching uh, apparatus or the top piece from coming back or leaning back when it's at a steep angle. And then we created, we used a half inch plywood 
to create a cover for the spring assembly area. And uh, we cut a hole out in it so you can still access that bolt if you need to loosen or tighten it. And the, cut a hole here, or cut a half a hole here to do the same with this bolt. But this way you can pull the, the uh, launcher back and there's no chance of, of any kind of being pinched or, or, or uh, caught in any way. And so those are the main innovations on the launcher there. So now I'm going to spin it around so you can take a look at it from a number of different angles. Uh, you can see there are one, two, three, four main pieces of wood that hold the uh, cover in place. And then we have our, our bolt there with the sleeve. Okay, so now we're going to see what we can do to uh, improve the launcher and make those, those uh, changes. You can already see the bolt with the sleeve is, is in place there to prevent the launcher from coming back too far. Now we're going to measure the, uh, the top part of the cover that's going to go over the spring assembly. That'll be six and a half inches wide. Uh, and then we've got a uh, half or a one inch spade bit that we're going to use to drill out the holes for the uh, bolts. So that's the center bolt and the spring bolt. And so now we're just marking the positions. We're drilling those bolt holes out and uh, cleaning that off. We're going to set our fence up and that fence will allow us to use the circular saw to cut a nice straight edge. And uh, we used the piece of wood there to make sure that the fence didn't interfere with the clamps. So now we're just trimming it down to the right length and cleaning off the edges with a file. And now what we've done is we're cutting the side pieces. Those are uh, an inch and three quarters high and they go all the way around the edge of, of that box and we're cleaning those pieces off. And they're six and a half inches wide by, the, then there's uh, one piece that's uh, 13 inches wide and that's the piece that runs along the long edge. And so now we're just clamping those in place. We've already marked them three eighths of an inch up. We're drilling our holes with a 16th inch drill bit. And now we're just putting uh, inch and a half panhead wood screws in. And we screwed our top piece on already. And now we're going to put the bottom piece on, just lining that up using the clamps to hold it in place. And again, three eighths of an inch up and we're just putting those screws in. Now we're gonna go ahead and put the top part on and we're again pre-drilling all those holes and using our pan head wood screws, putting them in. So we have everything lined up. The hole in the center wasn't as clean as we like, so I'm gonna take a Dremel and go back and clean that hole up, make it a little bit smoother uh, so that it's sure that we're out of the way of the bolt below. So we're gonna take the cover back off and we're gonna assemble the hardware inside the device again. You've seen us do that before, so that's not anything really new. We're just tightening down our bolts and making sure everything's secure. And then we're going to tighten down all the screws for the new cover on the launcher and make sure that it works. Now we're, we're shortening the bolt that we need, which was that little green bolt that was in the drawing, and cleaning it off with a file. So uh, that's just going to make sure that the uh, major piece doesn't fold back when it's at a steep angle. And so that's the, the part right there. And it, there's the original bolt down below. We've got our uh, paper clip that holds the ball in place and uh, keeps everything lined up. And again, we've got our countersunk holes. We can drop the, uh, the vise completely flat. And I'll just turn it around here for you so you can see all of the different components and how it, how it looks and works together. And we'll set that uh, angle bolt in and then we'll put the bolt and its sleeve, the other bolt and its sleeve in place. And so now we're going to test fire it put a ping pong ball in and we got a successful launch. So now we're going to go test it in the field. So we've got our projectile launcher set up and we have our numbers indicating the height on the back and the black uh, plastic there and then we have our tape measure so we can measure how how far it goes or our range. Initially we're going to set it position 4 which is the fourth position back from horizontal and angle 20. So 20 degrees. And you can see where the ball lands out there. We uh, went out and measured it in the sand. The sand kind of lets us see where the ball landed. So we're at position 30, or I should say 30 degrees, and the same position, so the fourth position down. And now we're at 40 degrees. Again, seeing that the ball is going up higher. Now we're at 50 degrees, and again, the ball keeps going higher, and it's, it's the, the range of the ball is decreasing, and the height is increasing. And so now we're at 60 degrees. And as we go higher and higher, the ball tends to, to sort of veer off a little bit. Now we're at 70 degrees, same position. The ball completely goes out of the screen, and again, it's not quite as far away. And now we're at 80 degrees. 
So we're going to take a look at precisely measuring exactly how high the ball goes. The sand measures at the, our range, and we can slow the, the film down and see that the, the ball went just below three feet. The top of the paper is exactly three feet, so the ball was about two feet ten inches on that particular shot. So we're going to try another one, and on that one, again, it was at 20 degrees, position four. We can see the ball goes to about three feet four inches on that particular shot. So that allows us to see the height, and we can use that in our calculations. Now we're going to see if we can use this information to knock down a tower of cups. So we've got it all set up. This is position four, 20 degrees. Yeah. Only three tries. <laughs> 